Hi everybody, this is Logan with Golden Thread Tarot. I'm super excited because this is going to be the reading for the full moon in Libra that is happening on um, March 24th into the 25th. And this is going to be called the worm moon for reasons which I do not know. And uh, it's happening at five degrees Libra. As usual, we light the Palo Santo to cleanse the space. Ouch! I always look into how the Palo Santo lights as part of the reading. So something just jumped out and it hurt really quickly, right? So again, everything that happens start to finish with the reading is something. So I'm wondering what's gonna come up in the reading because of that, but something might come up out of nowhere and like, it didn't hurt a lot, right? It was just like, whoa, where did they come from? Where did they come from? So we'll see. It doesn't always mean something like that's gonna happen, but alas, here we go. All right, everybody. If you're new here, welcome. Happy to have you. If you are a returning viewer, hi, how are you? And if you feel called, everybody go ahead and inhale. And exhale. Ow, again, something's trying to get your attention. Something's trying to get your attention. Sorry, we don't normally have this kind of disruptions here. We cleanse the space. Hmm. Well, it's not all good, right? It's not all, I mean, not that it's bad, right? But it's not, it's not always, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It's not always easy, right? That's why tarot is here to help us out, right? Conflict does exist, surprise does exist, but ouch, stinging. Okay. Let's go ahead and cleanse my aura to make space for yours. Unexpected, guys. So let's check your crown. Crown's fine. Third eye, fine. Throat. Heart. Solar. There it is. Sacral. Root. Solar, okay. Something's happening during this full moon that is going to impact your solar plexus somehow. Solar plexus lives right at the solar plexus, resonates with the color yellow and has to do with our own sense of confidence within ourselves, right? Um, our own personal sun, if you will. So please give me the, and it's not always a blockage. It's not always a blockage, right? Give me the energy of the collective's solar plexus for this full moon in Libra, please. The Hierophant in reverse. Please give me a card to work with this energy. Is the Hanged Man. Okay, so I'm picking up Do Not Be Defensive, right? Do not be defensive, okay? Something might come in that might hit your confidence this month, right? Don't be defensive. Don't be defensive, okay? It's gonna make you feel better if you can kind of keep your cool, right? The Hierophant in reverse is your card for the solar plexus at this time. So this is us being rebellious, right? This is us being rebellious, okay? This is us challenging the status quo, challenging the normal vernacular, challenging the normal ways of doing things. This is challenging the book, essentially, okay? This is going our own way. This is us sticking to ourselves and knowing what we know, right? Being true to ourselves fully. This can also be about commitments, partnerships, educational systems, jobs, right? Um, friendships, ways of being that, but more so like, like fundamental 
foundational contracts could be ending, right? Or at least up for a review, okay? And it might be something where you hold a lot of confidence within yourself, right? And you want to follow the rules, but there are so many things here where you're just like, I just don't agree with that, right? I don't agree with that. So something might come in and whoa, that kind of hurt a little bit. So I'm not going to just take that, right? I'm going to challenge that with the knowledge that I have about myself and the intelligence that I have about the world around me and what I've learned. And I'm not just going to take that, right? And it is Aries season at this time, right? Today, the 21st, officially the first day in Aries. So wow, also bringing in that fiery energy with literally like little pieces of, of the Pablo Santo hitting me, right? That's fire. That's like almost like an initiation, right? This fiery energy. And again, it's not just perfect all the time, right? We all come um, up against blockages and challenges and this is exactly why tarot is here to help us, right? So the hanged man, how to work with this energy, right, is to just be patient, hang out for a little while, right? Respond, don't react, take a breath, right? Don't just react. Stay cool, get a different perspective, right? Hang out for a little while, okay? Hang out for a little while. Okay, that concludes the chakra portion of the reading. Um, I'm very curious to see what's coming out for this, this full moon. I did read, um, I know Wonder, not Wonder Girl, excuse me, Ethereal Astrology um, uses the Inside Degrees by Elias Linesdale. And I definitely subscribe to um, uh, those Inside Degrees as well. And with the five degrees in Libra, he's talking about us wanting to feel into the energy of everything around us, right? Wanting to explore, wanting to live, you know, a very um, lovely and creative and adventurous kind of fiery energy, right? As we tap into Aries season, it's pretty perfect. So if you can please give me a card to signify the energy for the new moon, uh, full moon, excuse me, in Libra. The cave in reverse. Oh, one more other way, other way, okay. And the ocean in reverse with the vision. Okay, so with this cave here, just out sideways, I think you're wanting to be more um, introspective, right? wanting to be a little bit more withdrawn, right? But you're resisting that a little bit, right? And it's probably because it maybe hurts a little bit, okay? So there's some of us that don't wanna be alone with our thoughts, right? We just want to watch TV. Um, we want to go out with friends. We want to work. We just doing, 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 right? We want to kind of avoid going within, right? Full moons are all about the culmination and the kind of collective energy that we've learned from the new moon, right? Up until the full moon with the 28 day cycle, right? We want to use everything that we've learned in the last 28 days to come into this full moon, right? And everything's being illuminated at this time. Everything that we have gone through, everything that we are going through, is being illuminated at this time. And this is essentially saying, in many ways, we can't run from ourselves, right? 9-11, we can't run from ourselves. There are things that we do have to look at, right? Things that might sting to look at, things within your subconscious that are saying, look at me, this is bothering you. Even, even if it's you hurting yourself, right? How is your self-talk? right? Do you have a negativity bias where you focus on all of the negative all around you? And like when one positive thing happens, you're like, oh my God, fine. Great. I've learned to have a positivity bias because I know humans are wired for safety. But at the same time, if your life is completely safe, but you're numb, what kind of life is that, right? As opposed to being someone that has a positivity bias where I'm not wired essentially for, for not being safe, 
but I'm gonna focus on the things that are good and not focus on the things that are negative, right? So some people hyper-focus on all of their mistakes. Why would I do that? I saw the mistake, I learned from it, but I made one mistake out of 100 choices. So that one small mistake is gonna impact my whole day or my whole week? No. No, rumination over something you did 10 years ago, it's not gonna happen, right? That's just not how you wanna live your life, right? It doesn't feel good, it doesn't help anything, right? And it impacts you in the future. So that could even be a thought that's coming through like 10 years ago, boom, stinging your hand, right? Like, why did I do that 10 years ago? Ouch, why did I do that? So avoid rumination this month, um, but don't avoid going within. Right, there's a difference between us going within intentionally and then allowing rumination to kind of take over. I hope that makes sense. But tarot is definitely guiding you to um, look, you know, a little bit within this month, and we'll definitely learn a lot more about that. So, if you can please give me three cards to signify the energy for the collective for this full moon. Okay, interesting. We have the death card, we have the two of pentacles, and we have the ace of pentacles in reverse with the queen of swords at the bottom of the deck. Something has become stagnant, right? This is us resisting change. This is us going back and forth about the potential for starting something new, right? Ace of pentacles in reverse can be the fear of the unknown, right? Can be... Um, yeah, just uncertainty about moving forward. And with this death in reverse here being stagnation and the two of pentacles being uncertainty, right? So we're literally deciding between staying stagnant or starting something new. Do I 12, 12, do I stagnate or start something new, right? So we have the death here in reverse with the ace of pentacles, with the two of pentacles right in the middle, right? Stagnation. What do I do? Trying to figure it out, right? Trying to juggle, can I do this new thing with what I have going on in the past? Can I juggle both of these things at the same time? What's my decision going to be? And ultimately, really not knowing which decision to make moving forward because we don't know the potential outcome, right? Okay, well, that makes sense then. It makes sense. We're trying to figure out what the right decision actually is. So, we are going to use the number two, since this number came up, to be our angel number for the reading, okay? So if you can please show me number two. Trust. You build your life with gratitude. It's not just the big things you can hope for. It's also the little things for which keep everything together. You are not alone and your angels are reminding you that so many small things together create a miraculous and cumulative outcome. Create a list of what you are grateful for today. So to be honest, I am very grateful for a lot of things in my life, but there is something very different about writing it down, writing it down instead of just speaking about it right? Instead of just thinking it, okay? So what I started doing, honestly, like a week ago in my journal, because I try to journal every morning when I get up and I meditate, I sit by my window in my meditation chair that I have in my kitchen, and I turn the light off, right? I go to bed at 10, I wake up at 6, so I get up at 6, go to the meditation chair, put on a meditation on YouTube, sit, watch the earth being dark still, very quiet, right? And then when I'm done, I turn my lamp on and I journal for a little while. And a week ago, I just started journaling. I started with three things that I was grateful for each day. Then it turned into 10. Then it turned into 20. I'm gonna stop at 20 because I think that's, you know, that's a good number, right? But I will tell you, writing down what I'm grateful for, there's a reason why this is out there, right? Why therapists and 
psychologists and teachers in general just say, write down what you're grateful for each day, game changer. And I'm not just like, be grateful and an attitude of gratitude, right? Like literally it's helped me every day. I feel like abundant, even though I already know I'm abundant, I feel like extra abundant because I wrote down and it comes so easily, right? I'm grateful for makeup. I'm grateful for flowers. I'm grateful for tarot. I'm grateful for my bed. I'm grateful for my body. I'm grateful for espresso, right? I'm grateful for hairband. I could literally go on and on and on. It makes you realize how much you are grateful for. So anyway, let's go ahead and clarify a couple of these things. Tell me about the death in reverse. I saw the three of swords and the five of swords here, right? So there could be stagnation because you're not able to let go of something that has caused you pain, right? Three cards. Oh, excuse me. Card, the moon, right? Okay. So we're stagnating and, and, I'm going to use the word um, <clears throat> I'm going to use the word sitting in we're sitting in what has been right the word stagnation can be very inappropriate right death in reverse I don't believe doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again is called stagnation. It's not because stagnant means nothing's happening. Happening. If you're literally sitting on the couch every single day with no job, not showering, right? Not not doing anything, then you're stagnating. Stagnation causes us to rot, right? I know that none of you are literally sitting on the couch every day doing nothing. So you are not stagnating. You are simply status quo. Death in reverse, status quo, right? Every day has its ups and downs, but it's pretty much the same, right? Nothing crazy is happening, right? And there are these deep emotions that we are sitting in right now and we may not even realize it. They may even be like in the subconscious, right? Because the ocean in reverse, right? Is the moon in the reverse, but now we have the moon here upright. So in order for us to get out of this stagnation, we have to address these emotions, even if it's hard. Please tell me about the moon here. The four of pentacles in reverse, really needing to let go of something that is causing us to feel really heavy. What, what, what are you holding on to emotionally that's causing you to feel sad, quite emotional, and just heavy? right? We're having a tough time letting this go. This can be past heartbreak. These are things that didn't happen the way that we thought were going to happen. This can be loss, right? But these are deep, heavy emotions that we are needing to release at this time. But with the moon and the four of pentacles in reverse, we are having a little bit of a tough time doing that, okay? Sun in Capricorn here in reverse. All right, so what are we kind of trying to balance between with this two of pentacles in reverse? If you can please give me two cards for the, okay, yeah. You're um, honestly queen of pentacles in reverse with the seven of pentacles upright. Um, Saturn in Taurus, um, Saturn and Taurus, Seven of Pentacles. Yeah, Saturn and Taurus. We are trying really hard to establish financial security within ourselves, right? Um, 
is this the right move? Is this the right move? Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I change this job? Is this relationship serving me? You know, I do need to be stable within my life, right? So this is us, two of pentacles, really trying to build security within our, our own life, right? Just financial, feeling like we can nurture ourselves. This is essentially self-care, is the queen of pentacles in reverse. Um, but she's someone who doesn't have all of that right now, so she doesn't have everything she needs to have self-care completely tied up, right? This is having the insurance, this is having all of the savings account, this is having um, uh, all of the benefits that you need, right? This is, this is, this is being financially abundant, so you can do financial freedom, but you're working towards that right? With the seven of pentacles, you are working steadily towards that, okay? And all of this indecision is kind of you weighing out your options of where you've invested, what you want to invest into, the things that you've put your energy into. Are they actually prospering in the way that you want them to prosper? This is us just on our way to establishing personal um, stability, okay? So tell me about this Ace of Pentacles in reverse. Ace of Pentacles in reverse. Two cards, please. Three of Pentacles in reverse with the Page of Pentacles. Lots of Pentacle energy, everybody. We have out of the three, five, seven, nine cards we have out here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven out of nine cards here with just the, the tarot are pentacle cards. Lots of money talk right now. Lots of money. This is material resources, right? This is this is our material goods here. So this is a huge um, full moon about, and especially with being the being in Aries, right? And starting things. Aries is out about forward movement. What we're actually going to do, not just think about two, 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 two. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Three of pentacles in reverse, page of, of pentacles, right? Ace of pentacles in reverse can be us worried about starting something new because we don't think it's going to work, right? Mars and Capricorn, three of pentacles, it's not going to work. I don't know if I'm going to like that thing. I don't know if it's going to actually work out. I, I'm not sure, right? This is just uncertainty about our ability to continue working where we where we're working right things aren't working or worried about if i go somewhere new will it work out will it be as good as i have it here because i don't have it that bad but i have it bad enough where i'm questioning where i'm at right so page of pentacles in reverse or page of pentacles upright excuse me is us needing to just know ourselves you have to know what you want to do because indecision will only lead to you staying exactly where you are right now. And if you were perfectly happy with where you were, we wouldn't be talking about this right now. So there's something within you that is not entirely happy about where you are right now. So you're thinking about trying something new, right? You're thinking about doing something new, going on a new business venture, right? Starting a new side hustle, okay? This can be a multitude of things for everybody, but the advice, well, we didn't ask about advice yet, but I will, is you're just worried about taking the next step because you're not sure if it's going to work. But you, you do trust in your skills, but you're worried about being able to, like, really work through this potential new beginning. You're confident, but you're not king confident, right? So... Actually, I'm going to use the Luna. What is the advice? If you can please give me three cards, Luna, for the advice. <laughs> Interesting. You have the nine, uh, the Knight of Cups here, 
you have the Knight of Cups here in your advice. You have the Moon in reverse and you have the Lovers in reverse. All right, so for some of you, there is someone looking at you, okay? Knight of Cups here. Someone's looking at you kind of like that. Okay, you look cute, right? And I'm not trying to make this a love reading, but the Knight of Cups makes it, makes it adds love into the mix, right? And now we have the moon in reverse. So lots of emotions, lots of, right? Honestly, someone might be coming towards you that you're not entirely sure how you feel. Tell me more about this lovers in reverse for the advice. With the fool and the tower. The lovers in reverse with the fool and the tower and the wheel of fortune underneath that. Major arcana everywhere. Major arcana everywhere. Hermit in reverse. You're being told at this time to put yourself out there, okay? Be free, put yourself out there. Free yourself from whatever heavy energy you've been holding yourself in, right? Because someone's coming through here and they're looking, they're looking at you, okay? And it might be scary, right? because there are things that you don't want to look at that this person might be bringing up, right? Moon in reverse. I don't want to I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it, right? I don't want to look there. I don't want to look there. And for some of you, this person is making you feel things that you don't want to feel, right? They're making you feel things you don't want to feel. That's a that feels a little too deep. It's getting too deep. I'm feeling things, right? Like ow, that hurts. Ouch, like I don't I'm triggered, right? I'm I'm scared, I'm nervous, I'm triggered. And you might be thinking about past loves, right? Well, that didn't work out with that person. It didn't work out with that person. And this energy is kind of still lingering here and I haven't fully let that go yet. And I'm kind of deciding, should I move on or should I stay with this energy? It's super hard, I can't let it go, but I can't really invest any more time into that. And yeah, the advice is to let all of that go and start fresh. Have fun, be playful. Don't take all of that baggage with you. Don't take all the baggage with you. And if this is an, a business adventure, right? Only for certain people, the Knight of Cups, again, if you know tarot, you know tarot. Knight of Cups just doesn't, isn't just business related, right? There might be somebody coming through here saying hi. And if it's not love for you, Again, I'm sorry, I can't. The Knight of Cups is always somebody kind of coming through here, right? So you might just be getting some looks from some people, even if you're in a relationship. Some people might be looking at you like, wow, they look good, right? They look good. The advice is to just let it all go. Let it all go. Have fun. Have fun. Be playful. Enjoy yourself, right? Enjoy yourself. Okay, all right. If you can tell me more, please. Tell me more for the full moon in Libra. The Ten of Pentacles. Because when you let go and go into this next new venture that you're looking to go on, you're gonna get everything that you want. You're gonna get everything that you want. Right, the Ten of Pentacles is 
success, right? The Wheel of Fortune was underneath there, right? Success, good fortune, material, abundance, right? All of that. Stability. A lot of stability. Beautiful. Um, don't overextend yourself, right? Don't overextend ourselves. Six of Pentacles in reverse where we want to, you know, reserve our energy, right? Reserve our energy. But stay light. Okay. If you can please give me a plant spirit for the collective. Perseverance. Right, with that seven of pentacles, right? We're just, we have to just keep going, okay? We have to just keep, keep, don't let the lack of, of um, ten of pentacles keep you from going, right? Perseverance is the sun, this is the sun, okay? Keep going, you're doing just fine. And you're being intelligent about your decisions, right? Dandelion. Dandelion is bold, bright, and sunny, just like the fool, honestly. She pushes through cracks in cement and worms, hmm, worm moon, worms her way into the mortar of stone walls. Cheerfully, Dandelion's medicine is perseverance, but not the perseverance of the martyr. Instead, Dandelion is the eternal optimist. When I was shuffling through, I saw the eternal child, by the way. Um, like, <laughs> instead, Dandelion is the eternal optimist like the fool in the tarot deck she's always happy to set off on a new adventure in hope of learning more and digging deeper that's god right there you all know i get so whenever even though the whole everything is god when there's like a big god moment i like to point it out right we just found the fool and the fool just came up here in this deck okay she's not an airy optimist though with no grounding in reality her roots are strong. She's the shaman and the Buddha. And her message is this. Happiness is an inner landscape that has little to do with where you're planted. Don't worry about where you might be right now. When you're ready to make your own joy, whatever throw life throws at you, call on dandelion. Most plants need very specific climates to thrive but dandelion adapts to a wide range of environments, which means that no matter where you are and no matter which season you're in, you're likely to find dandelion hanging about. If you're feeling the pull of dandelion medicine, head out for a walk and see if you can spot this golden weed in the wild, urban or rural, it doesn't matter. Don't feel like walking? Call on Dandelion's cheerful perseverance to get yourself moving. On your walk, see if you can find Dandelion's sunny face. If you want, smile back at her. You might find yourself suddenly a tiny bit happier. Notice where she's growing and what she has to overcome to thrive there. Is she standing tall or hugging the ground? Is she in the sun or in the shade? Does she grow through soil or rock or concrete? What can you learn from your observations? Finally, notice where you come home from. Notice whether you come home from your visit with Dandelion feeling a bit more able to handle the ups and downs of life. Learning to adapt. Dandelion does this amazing thing. When she grows on a lawn that's mowed regularly, she stays short, so her flowers pass under the mower blades. How can you, like Dandelion, adapt to the world around you? What little change can you make that will allow you to thrive in your current situation? 
if your moon turns sour and you're unable to maintain dandelion's cheerfulness, ask yourself whether you need a mood adjustment or whether you're just pushing up against an obstacle that's taking you off your true path. Remember, perseverance isn't able to is a, isn't about putting up with untenable situations. It's about knowing the difference between that which is difficult but doable and that which is simply unhealthy for your soul, right? So it's like at the beginning when that little thing stung me. Ouch, ouch, it happened again. Is this something that if it keeps happening, I can work through it? Or is this something where I'm done? This has happened for too long and this is one of those things where the universe, God is telling me, stop letting it do that to you, right? Or this is one of those situations where, oh, it hurt a little bit, I can get through it. Oh, it hurt a little bit, I can do it. When is it actually worth it, okay? So I'm worried that um, I'm not gonna have enough time. So I'm gonna go ahead and close off the reading at this time. This was great, lots of great new things. This is new energy, right? So very much success is being wished to you during, um, during this full moon in Libra. And I will see you for the next new moon. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.